When you read music, the diagrams you're exposed to are not limited to musical notes and the different clefs. As a clarinet player, I also see clarinet fingering charts. These are diagrams of the clarinet, which indicate where you put your fingers to create a specific note. There are some slight variations in their appearance, but they all have the same function. As a diagram, they remind me of Egyptian hieroglyphs, something else that I find beautiful and fascinating. In a previous video, we saw that diagrams can become pieces of artwork, and this is also true for the diagrams of clarinet fingering charts. In this diagram, you will notice many circles, and this basic shape is fundamental to the creation of artwork. The diagram has everything that is needed to become an interesting piece of abstract art. You will notice that I haven't changed much about the structure. The diagram of the clarinet is still clearly visible in the image. I'm surrounding the shapes with abstract forms, but I'm not changing the structure or hiding aspects of the diagram. I'm not allowing it to become lost in the final image. Sometimes you have a starting point that you are willing to become lost within a larger image and at other times you still want it to be visible. That diagram is immediately recognisable to a clarinet player and I want that information to be retained so the image still speaks to them. I begin another image where I place the diagram side by side and then I place them in an abstract landscape. I only abstracted the space on the outside of the diagrams because then it is still recognisable. These images explore my fascination with those symbols but they do it in a respectful way that is less experimental. I'm pleased with the final images but I could have gone further. I had a beginner's relationship to these diagrams and the longer I played the clarinet, the more my relationship changed. In the early stages, the diagram seemed exotic and unusual. Later, they became something familiar. Sometimes it's good to return to the same starting point years later because the artwork you create will always be different. Hopefully, your abilities will keep developing over time and this will allow you to see improvements. The artwork also becomes an expression of your new relationship with the subject matter. Years later, I returned to this starting point and there was a new desire to be more experimental. The clarinet fingering chart had become so familiar I felt more comfortable creating artwork where the subject matter could become lost in the final image. I began by altering the fingering chart design with detail and extra shading. I knew this would make it more likely that the original diagram would become hidden later. It didn't take long for the diagram to become hidden. I incorporated repetition and immediately it became different. I didn't just repeat the whole diagram, I repeated parts of the diagram, allowing it to be broken into pieces and then reassembled into something new. At this stage, I'm just responding to the shapes and colours that are present on the canvas. The level of experimentation is higher than the earlier pieces, however, I don't compare them based on that judgment because I know that each piece of artwork represents a different relationship to the subject matter. There are many portrait painters who will only paint the people they know. When I look at their paintings, I understand why they made that choice. Sometimes the work is enhanced by the complexities of the relationship. The intimacy between the artist and the person who is being painted will always impact what is created. You will have a different connection to every subject matter, whether it's a loved one or a clarinet fingering chart. Art 
that is an excellent way of exploring your connection to everything that surrounds you. I still wanted to create another image based on clarinet fingering charts. I love to explore all the different directions the starting point can take you. I use repetition and overlay the diagram on top of itself. And once I'm pleased with the structure, I choose to refine it. I ignore the parts of the image that don't interest me. I add a touch of abstraction and then I add shading to make the structure more three dimensional. I also add a few dark abstract shapes. These have sharp edges to add contrast to the circles. They also curve around the circular shapes responding to their form. This is one of the clearest ways that you can respond to the shapes that are already on the canvas. You can follow the edge of an existing shape, although you want to create balance. So there must be areas of contrast. You must balance angles with curves. I sometimes find that when I'm creating artwork, the previous image impacts the next. My last piece began with cool colours and then other colours were used to balance it. When I've been working on a cool image, I sometimes want to move on to creating something with warm colours as a starting point. It's sometimes interesting to see how one piece of work connects to another. It teaches you something about your process as an artist. I like creating different kinds of images and I find that if I've been doing pictures with a lot of realism, I crave abstraction. On other occasions, I create so many abstractions, it leads me to desire more realistic elements. It's something I find interesting about the artistic process. However, it's often difficult to see this in the artwork of others. It's difficult to know the exact sequence in which their artworks were created. When artists share artworks with the world, they often don't share them in order. I did many images of the Mona Lisa and they are all numbered, but they are not in the order in which they were created. Perhaps we don't see it as important, but when I'm creating, I can see that it has an impact on my artwork. I add more shapes to the image. I'm happy with my warm, fiery canvas. So even though I want to balance the colors, I don't want to create an image with perfectly balanced, warm and cold colors. I've chosen purple for the image. The red asks for green and color theory suggests that I add that color, but I don't need to do it right now. I like the warmth. So I add the smallest amount of cool colors by using a purple. There is a blue in that purple. It is a cool colour muted by the warmth of a red. I add a small amount of blue to remind the viewer of the blue that is in that colour purple. It adds some balance to the orange that is on the canvas. I add a small amount of dark green to the canvas to add a small amount of balance to the red. The piece still has more warmth, but I want it to have that feel. Still, a small amount of a complementary colour can add intensity to both colours. There is another imbalance on this canvas. The piece is dark and could do with more light. Adding white to a canvas can really make the colours stand out. White enhances every colour on the canvas. The shapes I've added are in response to the shapes on the canvas. Some of the edges follow the sides of pre-existing shapes. Other white shapes overlap or go in different directions. It is this range of different approaches that makes the shapes more interesting. In this final stage, I add some grey detail to the image. I add some circles to the image and reusing that shape makes the piece more united. Each layer isn't seen as separate because they have shapes in common. This stops the colors from becoming isolated from each other. Again, these shapes sometimes follow the edge of an existing shape, 
then at other times they choose their raw direction. Their placement is loose, but it isn't random, and this creates a unified image. The imagery that is used in clarinet fingering charts is basically a simplified image of the clarinet. This three-dimensional object is reduced to a two-dimensional image. I felt inspired to create a 3D sculpture, not of the clarinet, but of the imagery from the fingering charts. At this stage, it is just a 3D file and hasn't yet been printed. It is a work in progress, but I wanted to share my process. I like the idea of the 3D object of the clarinet becoming a two-dimensional diagram that is a fingering chart and then that diagram becomes the starting point for a three-dimensional sculpture. I like that it goes full circle but it doesn't return to exactly the same place. In my sculpting software I created a framework I wanted you to be able to see the fingering chart when you view the sculpture at a certain angle. This framework became the basis for the sculpture. When the clarinet became a diagram, its holes became circles. Then when I turned the diagram into a sculpture, the circles became spheres. This sculpture isn't attempting to replicate the shape of a clarinet. It can drift into abstraction. From this angle, you can see the fingering chart. When you look at it from other angles, it becomes something else. That's one of the joys of sculpture. Every angle can deliver a different image. The fingering chart only needs to be visible from one angle. Because of this, I began to create another sculpture. I wanted to create something that contained many figures and the heads and arms of those figures create the shape of the clarinet fingering chart. It would be a sculpture of clarinet players, but none of them would be holding a clarinet. It is another way of exploring the same subject matter. I'll show you the sculpture from above so you can see the clarinet fingering chart. I've been playing the clarinet for a, a number of years now and I still have so much to learn. 
I'm fascinated by the changes in my relationship to the clarinet as an object. It is a source of inspiration. I find that this series may always be incomplete while I'm still playing the instrument because there is a relationship between me and the clarinet. 